it's my birthday and you know what I think is the best way to celebrate my birthday with some good old-fashioned National Ninja League Welcome to Ninja Lab. My name is William and yes, it is legitimately my birthday. Once again, we're going to be taking a look at results of the elite division of all the qualifiers that happen in our partner gyms around the country. And good news everyone, we finally were able to host a qualifier in the West Coast region. It has been a little difficult with all the current situation with the pandemic. But thanks to Summit Ninja Warrior, we were able to get it done. So let's do a take a look at the results right now. For the elite male division, in second place was Dom Torres. Dom was looking very strong early on in the course, was even able to complete the Cannonball Alley obstacle, which was very challenging. But he was able to make that transition from one Cannonball to the other and was able to get through the Spider Walk area, the Spider Climb area. And when he reached the shoot area where he had to drop himself through a ring straight down, upon landing, he unfortunately fell slightly out of bounds when his hand went a little too far back at least that's what I think happened and he was officially out on that part of the course but the good news for Dom and everyone you're going to see in the summit results section he qualifies for the West Coast Regional Finals And in first place was Mike Rever. Mike was honestly, he is he's probably one of the favorites for the West Coast Regional, I would say, because he was making some of these upper body obstacles look easy early on. He was able to get through some challenging pegboards and cliffhanger transitions that a normal man would not be able to do. Unfortunately, Mike made a very critical error when he made it to the landing platform for the cargo cannon obstacle. He unfortunately walked off the course instead of transitioning to the next platform. A very unfortunate error that cut his run short and took him out at that point in time. For the elite female division, in second place and in third place overall was Olivia Colusano. Olivia was honestly just very impressive on this course overall, just tackling some of these upper body obstacles like they were just simply nothing. She made it seem very effortless, like nothing actually bothered her, and that's the type of attitude that you need to become an NNL champion. She was even able to complete the 180 cliffhanger transition, but the only reason she was eliminated on the course was that she made an unfortunate mental error by using a support beam to help her get onto the platform, which was uh, considered out of bounds and was a disqualification, which is a shame, but look out for Olivia in the West Coast Regional Finals. And in first place overall was Katie Bone. Katie was able to get a couple obstacles deeper than Mike did and was able to be the only one to complete the wing nuts as well as the teeter beams that followed. Katie was simply just 
focused and primed to make it through the entire course. None of the obstacles were able to take her down up until she got to the mega wall. Unfortunately, probably due to being tired, she was unable to get the, up the wall and she unfortunately timed out on the course. But Katie has the honor of joining an elite group of women who were able to get first place overall in the qualifier that they competed in. Hopefully we'll have more women join that list in the future. In case you missed it, we just recently announced the dates and locations of all the regional finals. So make sure you go check out the update video posted by our very own Alex Cunningham. And you can check it out around this area here. There should be a card appearing on your screen. Go watch it and check it out. Now, let's take a look at Warrior Tech Rally. For the elite female division, in second place was Faith Forrester. Warrior Tech had some really good obstacles for this course, which included a wall run, a spider walk, and a very unique bungee bridge to bungee rope obstacle. And Faith was looking really good early on on some of those early obstacles. But unfortunately, when transferring from a wing ding to a very small trapeze bar, Faith just unfortunately whiffed on the grab, and she was taken out at that part of the course. And that was good enough for second place but not good enough for first place. And in first place was Julia Bainbridge. In the NNL, the rules are always the furthest, the fastest. And in this case, even though both Julia and Faith went the same distance in terms of number of obstacles clear, Julia did it faster by approximately five seconds. She was even able to make it a little bit deeper into the obstacle that they both failed at. She was able to reach the trapeze bar, but she was unable to grab the second wing ding. And it didn't matter if it was walking the plank or making a cool looking wall run, she was not going to be deterred on the course up until that final wing ding. For the elite male division, in second place is Brett Sims. Brett is one of the longest running competing members of the ninja community dating back before pretty much anyone in this sport and he showed that he still has the ability to do well on the course not only did he beat his beard battle rival ryan stratus who by the way qualified for the southeast regional from this event also was able to be one of three finishers to finish the course and he did so with style and flair not the kind of showing off type of flair but the kind of holy cow this guy is really skilled kind of flair he ended up finishing with a time of three minutes and 35.55 seconds which is the second fastest time and fortunately his whiff on the buzzer the first attempt did not cost him first place and in first place was max feinberg Max is one of those young ninjas that you really need to keep an eye on. He was able to finish this course with a time of 3 minutes and 5.22 seconds, blasting through faster than anyone else. Even though he was noticeably slower on cer certain obstacles such as the thumbtacks and the sideways than Brett Sims, he was able to just power through the final obstacles of the course and really make up for the time that he lost compared to Brett Sims. And that final burst of energy is something that just might take him to a world championship win, possibly in the future. Max is definitely someone to look out for, so don't sleep on Max. Also qualifying for the Southeast Regional was Jeremiah Lewis. 
Congratulations to him as well. Even though we announced the dates for the regional finals, there's still time for you to qualify to compete in them. Just go to nationalninja.com to look up the full schedule of upcoming events and see if there's an event somewhere near you that you are going to try to compete in. Who knows? Maybe you'll be able to squeeze yourself in the finals and possibly qualify for the world championship. Now, let's take a look at the second qualifier hosted at Windsor Ninja Academy. For the elite female division, in second place was Alessandra Murto. Windsor had some pretty wacky obstacles early on, which honestly, I like. That's kind of my style. And Alessandra was able to take them all on with strength and passion. But unfortunately, when taking on the sliding cliffhanger obstacle, she fell short of the landing platform. It looked like her grip gave out, transferring to the rope section. And unfortunately, that ended her run on the course at that point in time. And in first place was Sophia Lavalie. Sophia was able to get through more of these wacky obstacles on the course, including the slider, as mentioned before, and the, a cane lane type slider, which looked pretty cool. Honestly, Sophia was getting through the course a little bit faster than Alessandra also, which made I think it made a big difference overall. Unfortunately, when she got to the portion where she had to make a bridge using pegs from a pegboard, it looked like her strength just gave out and she decided to essentially take a knee on that obstacle. But it was still good enough for first place, so that's all that really matters. We had a total of four men complete the course here, and the man who did it in the second fastest time was Luke Dillon. Luke was able to power through some of these obstacles early on and was able to get through that tricky pegboard bridge building obstacle that I mentioned before, even though he got slightly hung up on that obstacle because one of the pegs didn't quite make it through all the way, so he got hung up a little bit on time but was still able to get through the entire course fast enough for second place. A total of 3 minutes and 55.04 seconds. Luke is someone to look forward to in the New England Regional Finals. And in first place was Nolan LaJoy. Nolan was able to just power through this course faster than anyone else. And honestly, like he is once again, one of the people to look forward to for the New England Regional Final. I have talked about Nolan plenty of times so far this season, and he has proved it. He finished the entire course with a time of three minutes and 26.49 seconds. He was able to blast through the pegboard section and through some of the other obstacles as well. He has a good chance. Also qualifying is Daniel Jones and Jay Mayer. Congratulations to them both.
Don't forget, you can go to our Facebook page in order to watch all of the qualifiers live as they happen, not just the elite division, across all age groups. The link is in the description down below. Make sure you go check it out. So now let's take a look at the second qualifier hosted at TA Fitness Plymouth. For the elite female division, in second place was Jennifer Stefano. And in first place was Addie Herman. Addie was able to take on a lot of the early obstacles very easily, swiftly, and smoothly, but unfortunately she simply slipped up when it came to the macaronis. Oh man, gotta watch out for those elbows, man. In second place was Nathan Pardo, who was able to get through 16 of the obstacles faster than anyone else of this grouping, but unfortunately for him, when he had to grab the ring in the midair and hook it on with an insane looking obstacle, he was unable to do it and whiffed and fell on that part of the course. And it's worth mentioning that both Jordan Thurston and Luke Packer qualified for the New England Regional Final. Oh, look who was in first place. It's True Becker. That's not a name I've ever mentioned before, except I totally have. TA Plymouth certainly had quite an array of wacky obstacles throughout this course. That That's a good thing. But True was able to take them all down and finish the entire course with a time of 3 minutes and 15.45 seconds. True, honestly, it has to be one of the favorites for the world championship, right? He just keeps winning. How is this man so successful? Well, guess we'll have to see what happens in the future. And if you haven't already, make sure you go check out the National Ninja League on Instagram and Twitter. We post updates there too. And hey, maybe even sign up for our mailing list. Links in the description down below. And we're going to check out the results for Center Court Lawrence, the second qualifier for this season. For the elite female division in second place was Abby Clark. Abby was able to just get through some of the tough obstacles, including the shelf and slide, which took out a lot of ninjas, including the women, but Abby was able to complete it. Unfortunately, a few obstacles later, she was taken out by their version of the flying bar called Slithery Snake Bite. And in first place was Rachel DeGutz. Rachel was able to get further than any other woman on this course and prove that she is a force to be reckoned with. Even though she already qualified, so qualification goes to Alexandra Murto by default, Rachel was able to show her core strength throughout much of this course, but unfortunately for her, when attempting dog off the leash, time was winding down, the warning buzzer was si siring off, and she unfortunately was unable to grab the doghouse and fell on that part of the course, but an imp impressive run nonetheless.
Oh look, I get to talk about Nolan Joy again, because he took second place for the Elite Male Division. Nolan was one of the few people who was able to complete Dog Off the Leash, the obstacle that I just mentioned in the previous run, but like many other people, he failed the harder version of the snapback. But the good news for Nolan is that he got there faster than any other person who failed at the snapback, allowing him to earn a qualification spot in the Northeast Regional Final. And even though he didn't face place in the top two, Jake Lewis qualified as well. And in first place was Josiah Pipel. Josiah is, on a personal note, someone who I think should absolutely not be overlooked when it comes to the future of the sport of ninja, as I know that this person is very strong and very talented. Josiah, however, proved my theory correct because he was the only person to finish the course. The snapback obstacle that I mentioned was the final obstacle and he was the only one able to complete it. He hit the buzzer and was able to complete the entire course with a time of 2 minutes and 26.97 seconds. He is the man. And finally, it is time for the comment question of the week. Now, it is honestly truly my birthday, and I got to celebrate my birthday last year at the National Ninja League Season 5 World Championship, and honestly, it was one of the best birthdays I ever had. So, my question for all of you is, what type of ninja-related present would you like to get on your birthday? Maybe it's a meet and greet with a certain ninja, or getting to go to a certain event, maybe a certain obstacle gets built in your backyard. Who knows? Let me know in the comments below. I'm going to wrap things up with a special double header that was hosted at Steel City Ninja. For Elite Female Division, in second place was McKinley Pierce. Ever since her return to Ninja, McKinley has been dominating these qualifiers, constantly getting in either first or second place, and this was no exception. She was looking strong as ever, but unfortunately transferring to a cliffhanger ledge is what did her in and took her out on the course. And in first place was Sophia Oster. Sophia was unable to get as far on the same obstacle that McKinley Pierce, but she made it there faster, possibly 20 seconds fa faster, which I say is a good pace to go by. Sophia is definitely not someone to sleep on for the Northeast Regional Finals. For the Elite Male Division, in second place was Mike Michaco. Along with Ryan Kruthammer, they both qualified for the Northeast Regional Final through this event. And Mike was able to persevere and clear the entirety of the course in a time of 2 minutes and 40.78 seconds. It wasn't easy though, he had a very sketchy landing on Angry Birds, but unfortunately for him, he was not eliminated at all on that course and was able to complete the entire thing. Great job, Mike. And 
and in first place was Aiden Wood. Aiden was smooth and confident throughout the entire the course and didn't have any sort of problems that Mike did and was able to complete the entirety of the course in a time of 2 minutes and 24.44 seconds. Aiden is definitely someone to look out for in the Northeast Regional Finals. And now for the second qualifier. In second place of the elite female division was Sophia Oster. Sophia was once again very strong and steady throughout the entirety of the course that she was competing on, but unfortunately when making the transfer to the cliffhanger from Deja Vu, she was unable to make the transfer. Rather ironic, it's called Deja Vu because it was located in almost the exact spot that Sophia failed the night before. And in first place was McKinley Pierce. Yes, that's right, they swapped places. McKinley, in a total sense of deja vu, failed the exact same obstacle she failed the night before. And even though she took more tries to complete deja vu than Sophia did, she still was able to complete the obstacle faster. Approximately, uh, I'd say, 14 seconds faster. McKinley adds more points to her total. And also, congratulations to Jennifer Stefano, who qualified for the Northeast Regional Finals. For the elite male division, in second place was Aiden Wood. Aiden had to settle for only second place as he was unable to complete the course this time around. He was looking strong overall, but he wasted some time on the rope doorknob area, but he was able to make up enough time to complete 12 obstacles faster than the person in third place. However, on that 13th obstacle, the called the traditional warrior, he simply fell at the very end of the course, lost his back balance, and fell sideways and not on the landing platform, disqualifying him and taking him out at that point of the course. And in first place was Ryan Sanders. Ryan officially qualifies for the Northeast Regional Final by completing more obstacles than anyone else on this course. He was able to reach the Angry Birds type obstacle, and unfortunately that's the point he went down on. But it's also worth mentioning that even though he simply went further than anyone else, he was also operating at a faster pace than anyone else. He completed 13 obstacles almost in the exact same time it took Aiden to complete 12. Ryan is someone to look forward to in the future. And also congratulations to Adam Silinski who qualified for the Northeast Regional Finals as well. Hooray! Thank you all very much for watching. Make sure you subscribe and you can watch the full versions of all the runs mentioned in this episode and many more. Thank you all very much for watching. I love you. Goodbye.